there is no more money. It is not going to be possible, possible to put more money into this contract. We have to have that wage constraint. And, and all along, what I have said is that I believe that the process didn't work the way it should have, that it wasn't as respectful a process on either side as it should have been. And so that's the beginning of the conversation from, for me. Uh, how, do we, how do we put a better process in place for next time? And how do we get back to a respectful relationship so that, so that we can not have to worry about kids having extracurriculars in school and we don't have to worry about the rancor in the system? That's where I want to go. So when will kids have extracurriculars back? I can't answer that question. I don't, I don't know. I, you know. I'm going to do my very best to uh, move that process along. And as I say, last night was a, was a good constructive start. Is the makeup of your cabinet going to be very close to that of Mr. McGinty's, or are you going to be reaching out to some of the different, you know, the other people who haven't previously made it into cabinet? So two things. First of all, um, I have no intention of um, disowning my record as a member of the McGinty government. You know, I we have made huge advances in education, in healthcare, in infrastructure investment, and I'm extremely proud of those. Will there be a new cabinet with new people in it? Absolutely. Absolutely. My big concern on transit is that we go forward. There's been a lot of discussion about the existing plan and City Council has got a plan in place and so uh, you know they're, they're working to implement it. We've got 8.4 billion dollars that's being spent in the city. My concern now is what do we do next? How do we pay for the next phase of transit and how do we how do we work with the region so it's not just the city of toronto but the region uh, to make sure that people can get in from from ajax for example and from york region and from mississauga so that they can get into the city and that people from the city can get out to uh, out to other parts of the region in order to work and visit with family and shop and all of the things that they want to do. So that's why I'm talking about the need to create revenue streams. That's why Metrolinx is going to bring forward a strategy that will have a number of revenue tools in it and we're going to have to decide which of those tools we're going to use because otherwise we're not going to be able to have that conversation about how to build the next phase. And the big move, you know, Metrolinx has got the big move. It is a, it's a $50 billion plan and uh, we've put in 12 billion or so of that, but we need, we need to continue to build.